Hello everyone and welcome to another Feed Army video. My name is Emmanuel and today I will talk about how to add your returns policy and also how to fix it if you encounter issues. So within Google Merchant Center you will want to go to delivery and returns or in the US it will say shipping and returns and then click on the returns policies. And you will see here that you can add the return policy. Now you might in some situations if Google has detected the returns policy also see that you have this information and then shows this detail already and you will see something like this. So it's where you then have all the info pre-added. What I recommend is that you start over. The reason is that most of the times the details that uh, Google has collected is not really correct and when you want to save it, it doesn't really save it. It's a known bug and it has been uh, having an issue for nearly a year or more. So don't even, uh, ex you can accept and continue if it's 100% uh, correct, uh, but most of the times I prefer to start over because that is a much safer way to ensure that all the details that you add is 100% correct because any inaccuracies can have the consumer get annoyed at you uh, for not having accurate uh, returns policies. So don't do uh, accept and continue and also do not edit and continue just start over. If you don't have that then obviously you just want to click on add return policy. The first step is to uh, of course add your returns policy so for example feedarmy.com forward slash returns and refund. Then what you want to do is select your country that this uh, policy is applicable to. Of course, you can add multiple countries if the refunds and returns policy uh, covers all these specific countries. Um, but all, if you have different URLs for each specific country, you can then add them individually. So you can add multiple uh, return policies within Google Merchant Center. Then what you want to select is how do you accept returns? So the first one is yes, I accept returns for defective and non-defective products. I accept returns for defective products only and no, I don't accept returns. So. For example, the first one that is the most common one for in Europe, for in the US, most of the times it is only for defective products it, because the rules and laws within the US is very different from uh, Europe, for example. However, each country, for example, what is in, uh, applicable in Australia, I'm not 100% sure, but you need to check what your local laws are and that it is correct. Also make sure everything that you select here must be also added in your returns and refund policy so that Google can check and compare the info because there is a review process for all the details that you submit and it must be legally correct. Then select if you accept exchanges. Yes, I accept exchanges or no, you don't accept exchanges. So I will select UK for now and then click on next. So now what does the product condition need to be? Can it only be new products or can it also be new and slightly used products? What is the returns window? For example, in the UK, you need to at least give a certain amount of days. This is called the online distance selling. And so that has a specific day. In Europe also, you need to give specific uh, amount of days for returns. While in the US, you don't need to offer any re return windows. So what you offer, it depends on uh, yourself. Of course, please be aware that the return window is linked to your store badge. And that is usually where the higher your return days are, the better your store badge eligibility is. For example, if you only offer a few days, then you will not get a store badge. But if, for example, it's 30 days, which is quite uh, common in the industry, then most likely you will get the store badge eligible, of course. Um, not vegetable, I nearly said vegetable, eligible. Uh, make sure that you also apply for the other uh, recommendations within the store badge, which is, for example, the shipping pricing, uh, the images and etc. So there are a lot of uh, things, but you can check that, uh, of course. So now window extensions, that means that, for example, for Christmas, it's very common that you extend for, let's say, 10 or 14 days the return window. This gives your customers a lot more benefit in um, 
uh, getting the items back to you because most likely they are traveling and then cannot review the item uh, as expected and that is then more beneficial for your business ethics so then once we've selected this so now you want to select how do customers return their products? Is it in store? Is it at a drop off location or by post? Most likely by post. Then the currency that applies to this policy, make sure that that matches your data feed currency. And then the return label, make sure that you select which one is uh, applicable. In some cases, it is a customer responsibility. If, for example, you've added the returns address on your return policy, then uh, this is uh, suitable. Uh, it's also possible if you have an account uh, within the website where they can download and print the label or in some cases merchants might include the return label in the packaging itself so select what is most suitable now check the restocking fee no cost a fixed cost or a percentage of the product price now for the refund processing time that means that you need to calculate the processing time from when you receive the item and check the details and apply the refund and the estimated refund time for the bank itself so check with your multiple banks and then take the average of your different banks that does the refund so if you're accepting paypal for example check how long that takes for paypal if you accept stripe or a credit card and and um, debit cards through for example shopify payments then check the policy within those uh, uh, systems what the refund time is and then add that to your own uh, refund policy so for example let's say five to ten days so if it's a range then obviously set the maximum uh, time here and then next is for the agreeing to what you've added so make sure that you can see here i confirmed the information i ended matches the return policy on my website and that is what i mentioned in the beginning that you when you add your policy and add all the details that it needs to match your return policy don't just uh, add it here and then it's missing from your returns policy so once you've uh, accepted and saved the returns policy, it takes up to 10 days for Google to review what you've added. Um, so make sure that your website is online active with the returns policy and uh, not being changed during this time. Then if you're rejected, then obviously you will see something like this. That can mean anything, but for example here it says very basically return information provided does not match your online store so that can happen that means then that you need to check your returns policy and ensure that it's added meaning when it's when they say it doesn't match it most likely means it is missing from your returns policy so make sure that is added and that is how you add a returns policy within google merchant center if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment downstairs. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.